this is Lisa Donner from Liberty Nation, and today we're discussing Trump touching the gun third rail. It looks like the great negotiator in chief had some things to say about guns that has some of us on the right hopping mad. Joining us for our Liberty Nation TV roundtable today are Scott Cosenza, our legal affairs editor and gun enthusiast, Sarah Calgill, our national correspondent, who is well-versed on all things political, and finally, Tim Donner, who wrote an article about the subject that is getting a broad audience. So let's start with you, Tim. You're even being called an anti-Trumper after writing this piece, which is almost funny. Well, there's a first time for everything, Lisa, and I think the reason is because this was not an opinion piece nor a news piece, it was an analysis piece. It basically asked the question, why did Trump do what he did in saying that he favored the uh, abolition of bump stocks uh, and also strengthening background checks? These are things that are not uh, things that Second Amendment supporters are fond of. But the problem is, for those who are Second Amendment absolutists, we passed the point of Second Amendment absolutism long ago. We have many gun laws on the books now. And I think what Trump is doing, in, 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 in my estimation, is he's calculated that his base is solid enough and will support him to the same degree that they did before, that he feels he can make some compromise on something that's become an issue so dominant that even a Republican legislature in a state governed by a Republican governor, Florida, uh, passed legislation that uh, has upset many uh, gun rights supporters. So I think it's strictly a political calculation, which I I would um, equate to what he did on immigration, where he's favored some things, including the legalization uh, of 1.8 million DACA recipients and potential recipients, because he's seeing what the public says and realizes he's the president of all the people and can't always do exactly what he wants to do. Scott, what's your take on what Trump is putting out there in terms of gun restrictions? Well, I disapprove of them to be sure. And I think that most of us who fight for maintaining our current level of respect for second amendment rights also thinks that uh, it's a bad choice. Now, practically speaking, it doesn't affect many people. There are not, not many bump stock users. Uh, they are a very much a niche item. Uh, and a lot of people are gonna get upset about not being able to access them uh, as a matter of practicality. As a matter of law and right though, that's another issue. And the Second Amendment activists, uh, which I'm one, tend to think that if somebody can on thin justification take away some uh, item that, uh, impinges on a fundamental right, well, then that's time to put the brakes on. And that's what I think uh, is happening here with bump stocks. Sarah, from a political standpoint, do you think Trump is committing political suicide here? A absolutely not. Um, I understand that there's 14 million people who identify and, and proclaim that they are in lockstep with the NRA, but he, this is what Trump does best. You know, he is, he is appealing to some moderates he's appealing to um or attempting to appeal to some democrats he's never going to get very far and, and 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 as scott said these are minor adjustments and i don't understand what the backlash from the republicans are on on the bump stock issue for one i just don't get it it's just really not anything to me that that says, oh, we're taking your rights away from you. Hey, Lisa, if I could add one point on that. Historically, we've seen that support for gun control is very broad and very shallow, and opposition to it is fairly narrow and very deep. And so one of the things that Trump does put at risk is, uh, is angering some of those people, not to the point where, let's say, if there was a repeat of the last election, they would come out and support Hillary. That's certainly not a risk. But the risk is that they don't take two of their friends when they go to the polls and help knock on doors because now that may or may not be true here because again bump stocks are a bit of a niche but if any further encroachments are made i think that, that uh, he could run a real risk of seeing some political damage from that from that side of the uh of the aisle tim do you have anything you wanted to add there well i remember when bill clinton when he was president once walked out 
uh, the church. As a matter of fact, it was the funeral of Ron Brown, who died in a plane crash, and he was carrying a Bible. And I remember somebody asking whether his liberal base would be offended by him carrying a Bible, symbolizing that he's some kind of uh, fundamentalist. And there, the response was, look, they know where he really stands. We understand the need to have to make symbolic gestures or small gestures or some small measure of compromise uh, in, in order to advance his political prospects. I think this is all about 2020. I think it's all about Trump's recognition of the fact that those pesky suburban white women who are famously soft on immigration and on guns uh, have been abandoning him and he needs those to get those votes back in order to secure his chances for re-election in 2020 and in fact to secure uh, a Republican majority again in Congress this year. So I think it's a strictly political act. Trump supporters know where he really stands. Well, but we know from Hillary Clinton that women don't really vote. They just do what their husband tells them to do. <laughs> uh, Indeed, I was hoping we could get into, into Hillary's disastrous tour of India falling down the steps twice and and blaming uh, blaming women for listening to their men on how to vote in 2016. That's certainly another topic for another day. But Sarah, can you think of a way politically where the president can make everyone happy in the gun discussion? I mean, today I saw a number of comments of people saying, Trump is dead to me. That's it. I'm done. Well, I haven't seen anything like that on any of social media, you know, perusing our own site. Um, uh, we well, do you have haven't looked at the comments in my in you my. You haven't looked comments. at Liberty Nation. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've I've been on the receiving end of some very you know diehard conservatives, um, but I I believe that it, there is no way to make anybody happy on this. No one is going to be happy, but perhaps um, both sides will you know maybe bend just a little bit. But no, there's there's no way he I think, he I think can't that one negotiate of the reasons, around the Second Amendment and make anybody happy. Scott, I think that one of the one of the reasons that you can give a compelling reason why a pro gun president should in fact do nothing is because the people who are clamoring for him to do something are never going to support him for the most part, no matter what he does on guns. They hate him no matter what on every Absolutely other thing. True. This is just an attempt true. to get their way by standing on the, the the dead bodies of children in order to, to get a policy proposal that they wish would have occurred regardless of that tragedy happening or not. And I think that th this is something we've seen time and again, unfortunately, which is that there's an event, a tragic event, uh, where a gun is used, and then gun restrictions are enacted, which would have no bearing on whether that event took place or not. Tim, I did read your piece, and you know, the, one of the things that you mentioned was uh, the use of bump stocks in Las Vegas, and we still don't actually know if they were in fact used. In other words, we know they were installed on some of the firearms that were photographed in that room, but we don't know if they were actually used to kill people or not. And even if they were, it doesn't make them that much more effective or deadly. So we have uh, a solution to, to a problem that didn't exist. Meanwhile, it's ratcheting down further, one tiny notch to be sure, but ratcheting oh. Americans and their right to keep and bear arms. And I think that that's, uh, that's a bad dead end for uh, for gun uh, supporting administration. So. All, right, all right, I want to move the discussion to one other point that the president made, and that is where he talked about having teachers uh, in schools. And I have been advocating this for years. I mean, people thought I was crazy when I wrote about it two years ago. But now he's saying it, and that is get teachers to learn how to handle firearms and arm themselves. I mean, I gave a, um, a talk at a church retreat uh, in September. And of course, we know there have been church shootings and whatnot. And I was just talking to the pastor on the side, and he said he never, ever goes to the pulpit without his 45. Yeah, well, I think that um, 
uh, when when somebody who's malicious and shows up with a gun, uh, the best thing to meet them with is somebody who's uh, not malicious and has a gun themselves. You know, uh, the, the 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 saying is a good guy with a gun is what's needed to stop a bad guy with a gun, and that seems uh, seems to me to be true. Lisa, the reason that uh, that I agree with you pretty much 100% on concealed carry in schools for those who are already trained uh, well, and have concealed carry too. permits. People can be uh, trained too. And they can be trained if they wish to be. But the reason that this would be the most effective policy in my view is because of the surprise element, because those who, who would attack a school if they don't know who has a gun, that's a far greater deterrent, I think, even than having armed security guards who are clearly uh, uh, marked as such, who were clearly clothed as a security guard. The element of surprise, I think, is indispensable. After all, we know that concealed carry is the only thing that can actually reduce gun crime. Pure gun control and confiscating certain weapons doesn't work. Sarah, I'm going to Oh, go ahead, Scott. I was just going to say we could also eliminate government schools, which I think would be consistent with the Constitution, returning the taxpayer dollars to the taxpayers and let people who have children uh, decide for themselves how they wish to uh, educate those children and provide for the security while they're being educated rather than foist that burden upon uh, all the rest of us. Point well taken. But Sarah, I'm going to give you the last word. And, and that is... I guess I'm interested in knowing whether you think, is it impossible for teachers and administrators to learn how to handle a firearm and carry it with them on the grounds? I mean, is that politically like a non-starter? Well, I think it's completely uh, doable. The, the only issue I see is that yeah, you, know, you can train somebody all day long and, you know, verse them in how to field strip an Uzi, but that doesn't mean they're going to be comfortable holding that gun, pointing that gun and shooting somebody. Um, while I agree with arming teachers, if they want to be armed and if they want to participate right. um, and agree with Tim that the element of surprise, I mean, heck, they could case the school and know, you know, where the armed guards are standing around and when they're at lunch. So I do agree there. And as for the last word, well, heck, Scott, I'm just going to say this. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. I got the last word in finally. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us today for another LNTV Roundtable. Make sure to hit LibertyNation.com for conservative news and analysis. And remember, now you can listen to our stories on SoundCloud at the touch of a button. For Tim, Sarah, and Scott, I'm Lisa K. Donner, and this is LNTV.